So I've made a few videos recently looking at the Wi-Fi performance of the ESP32 and looking about how we can get better antennas to improve that performance. And as I was browsing AliExpress, which I kind of do too much because there's always something interesting and new to sort of get hold of and have a look at, and I stumbled across this. So it's an ultra wide band Wi-Fi RF frequency, blah, blah, blah antenna. It's a directional antenna and it claims it's got a bandwidth from 800 megahertz to six gigahertz. That's a massive bandwidth you can see it's got 4.9 stars so it must be good and it's relatively cheap i actually paid a little bit less than this i paid something like five pound fifty so it really is a bargain so if we look at it there's not really any information basically the maximum power you can put into it is claimed to be less than five watts the bandwidth is from 800 megahertz to six gigahertz as i already said and it's a directional antenna so it's within 28 degrees but it's not omnidirectional that's for sure it tells you nothing it's 19 centimeters long weighs 50 grams very very little information doesn't tell you what type of antenna it is or anything you can find various suppliers of similar looking antennas whether they're the same or not i'm not so sure and some of these give you a little bit more information about what they are how they work so this one here is not exactly the same but as you can see from the picture it looks very similar it's sort of 20 centimeters long it's got a very wide bandwidth and it gives you a lot of more information about what they are so it's a log periodic antenna and basically the bottom line is it should give you around this one gives you three to six dbi there's another one here this gives you around five to six dbi gain and it's got a similar bandwidth to the one i bought from aliexpress they don't really look entirely the same but relatively close of course i bought one and we're gonna have a look at it so here it is um yeah it's exactly sort of 19 and a half centimeters long and the first thing i'm going to do is stick it on my nano vna which is here and look at its standing wave ratio see if it is what it claims it is fortunately my nano vna is not particularly great it only goes up to two gigahertz so this is only covering a portion of the claimed bandwidth of this particular device anyway we can have a look at least from 800 to 2 gigahertz i've set up a span between 500 megahertz and 2 gigahertz i need to do the calibration again because i've been fiddling around i found a, uh, a better wire so i'm going to do the calibration now i'll fast forward this bit let's now connect it to this antenna it's a little bit awkward so you can see when this antenna is connected generally right from yeah around 760 so here this point here is around 760 megahertz you can see standing wave ratio is really low around one and it goes right up and then we get to 1.5 gigahertz and it's still pretty low then something you know goes a little bit crazy it goes up again here around 1.9 gigahertz and that's as far as my um vna will go so i don't know exactly what's going to go off that right hand side but what i can do is i can actually put this on the spectrum analyzer so this is the tiny sa ultra so it's a spectrum analyzer not a vector network analyzer and it goes up to six gigahertz so i've already set this up to go from two gigahertz to six gigahertz and um, nothing connected to it at the moment let's just connect it see what we get so it's now connected to that antenna max hold on so we basically keep a record of of the highest peaks or the peaks so it's no surprise that this peak here is the biggest because this is the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi in my house it's pretty high minus 23 dbm there's, there's, this is not a very controlled experiment, I should say. So, you know, there's loads of different Wi-Fi devices. Some are on the 5 gigahertz, which is up here. Some are on the 2.4 gigahertz down here. There's my neighbors. There's probably 20 different Wi-Fi channels all being used around here. I've got Bluetooth, Zigbee, all sorts of stuff in this house. So I'm not surprised to see so many spikes. I'm not really sure what these ones are, but the real test is going to be whether it actually improves anything. So let's just get the peak here. So at 2.47 gigahertz, so pre-standard Wi-Fi, I'm at minus 23.6 dBm with my directional antenna. Let me unplug it. And I've put the telescopic antenna on. If you remember, minus 23.6, I'm going to clear this screen now. I'm pretty pleased at that. There's a clear difference in the 2.4 gigahertz range. This is minus 35 dBm. The other one was much um, larger. So in that sense, it's definitely given some improvements. And I should have said when I, I did the actual antenna, it was pointing directly towards my router, which is a few meters away. 
So if I want to test this antenna on the ESP32, I'm going to have to do some modifications because the ESP32, this is the Seed Studio version, has this little connector on it. I don't know what it's called, but for sure this antenna has got an SMA connector on it. So you can see here an SMA. So somehow I need to go from this to this, and I can't really think of an easy way of doing it. So I'm going to do it the fudge way. I'm going to take this um, antenna I got with one of these clone ESP32 minis and I'm going to basically unsolder this end and I'm going to solder it onto basically the bottom of this SMA socket here. Give me a few seconds and get that done. Okay, let me get the multimeter on that to make sure I've not shot them out. This should be an open circuit still. Good. Perfect. Okay, so that should be now connectors. All I'm going to do to test this is get the Wi-Fi example sketch from the Arduino library. This basically lists all the access points within the sort of detectable range and gives you the RSSI, which is the relative signal strength indicator. So as you can see, I'm uploading that now. And all I've got is the Seed Studio C3 connected to the external antenna it actually ships with. So in a previous video, I tested this antenna. It was really great. So this is a pretty tough test. I'm going to compare this antenna to the directional antenna, which I'll connect shortly. We can see their various Wi-Fi network and you can see the strength is kind of bouncing around from around minus 39, 37 and all those kind of things up to around 40. We're sort of seeing, I don't know, 13 networks I tend to all be on channel 11 or 1, which is kind of stupid. Mine's the top one and it's on 11, so I really should change that and it'll probably get better performance all around. But anyway, this is the Seed Studio C3 with the original Seed antenna. Now I'm going to connect this directional antenna. Now let's have a look. You can see it's actually less good. It's made it worse. Uh, let's just check the directionality of this. Well, there you go. We're actually seeing less hotspots, which is probably what you'd imagine if you think about the angle that the sort of the, the beam is coming out. Or going in so around minus 35 minus 34 for the signal strength so again we've seen sort of a, a four five db gain which is you know that's quite a lot if you think about it as a log number so overall that seems to work as expected whether it's worth using such a massive antenna just to get a sort of sort of a five db gain i'm not so sure i think the actual antenna on the seed studio the the sort of little printer plasticky one is really cool and that kind of works well so if it ain't broke why change it and i'm not sure this gives you a massive advantage although maybe the directionality is actually the advantage here so thanks for watching hope you found the video useful if you did please like and subscribe and of course if you've got any questions pop them down below and i'll do my best to answer them